Okay, so let's examine the King James Bible versus these other modern translations and see how these other translations, these Bible perversions, Vatican-approved Bible perversions, they change doctrine and they even change the gospel of Jesus Christ, okay? So, uh, first of all, let's just take a look at this one here. I've got a, a number of examples to give. Uh, 1 Corinthians 1, verse 18 for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. Now, let's see what the ESV says here. For the word of God is, for the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. So they changed the gospel of Jesus Christ to you're not saved. But you're being saved, which lends to the idea that you have to do wonderful works to be saved. That, In essence, what Jesus did doesn't even matter. Just be a good person. Now, you've probably heard this. I remember watching this in cartoons and stuff. If you're a good person, you go to heaven. If you're a bad person, you go to hell. That's not the gospel of Jesus Christ at all. Of course, um, Jesus looks at us as righteous if we have faith in him not our works are nothing but filthy rags so anyways if you understand the gospel the very simple gospel that's preached all throughout the bible and hammered home time after time after time after time that you have eternal security when you are born of god you can never lose it so if you understand that then you understand that this verse the being saved is completely uh, incorrect and uh, it's uh, teaching a different gospel all right so the NIV uh, to those who are perishing so we're all perishing right we're all gonna die it's appointed unto man once to die and after that judgment so the only way uh, we can make it uh, to everlasting life is to be born of God to believe to have faith in Jesus Christ but to us who are being saved, there NIV is doing it again, right? Okay, and so on and so forth. So <clears throat> let's uh, continue here. Oh, let me go back here. All right, so like in John 1, John 3, we could, I'm just going to show you a couple examples here. All right, so uh, like John 3, 16, right? Most popular verse in the entire Bible. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now these modern perversions, they can't screw this up, can they? Well, of course they can. Of course they can. ESV, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Okay, so uh, Jesus is the only son. You're not the son of God. Only Jesus is. Now what kind of doctrine are they pushing there? Right, so if we go back here, let's just go back to John 1, if you will. All right, and uh, let's see here. Where are we at here? Um, uh-oh, I can't find it. Oh, there it is, verse 12. All right, but as many as received him... To them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And now are we the sons of God? So, again, what's this idea that, what's this doctrine that they're pushing, right? They're pushing some sort of doctrine that only Jesus is the son of God. And we are not sons of God. And, okay, well, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Okay, right here. Beloved, now... Are we the sons of God? Now, hold on. It's, it says that he gave his only son. Okay, so it should say his only begotten son because Jesus was born of a virgin. He was born of the Virgin Mary and of God the Father in heaven. All right, so this also pushes other, this gives room for other false doctrines as well to say that he is, um, the only son and takes away this idea that he was born from his father in heaven all right now and then john 1 18 all right so also uh, the niv no one has ever seen god but the own the one and only son 
So you're not a son of God. Jesus is the only son of God. And it doesn't even say that he's the only begotten son of God, which is really a critical point. No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten son, which is in the bosom of the father, he has declared him. All right. So let's continue uh, here in, uh, what is the second Corinthians uh, 2.18? All right, in the King James, it says, no, wait, I'm sorry. That's not the one I wanted to look at, is it? No, that's 1 Corinthians. Duh. Let's go to 2 Corinthians. For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as of God in the sight of God speak we in Christ. Now, let's take a look. I'm going to read this again in case uh, I mumbled my words too much. So, For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as of God, in the sight of God speak we in Christ. Pay attention here, for we are not as many which corrupt the word of God. All right, very, very important because uh, there are a lot of people corrupting the word of God. So let's see what these corruptors say. For we are not as many, for we are not like so many peddlers of God's word. Well, they actually, they are peddling the word of God. They are selling their uh, Bibles. They're getting pat. They're uh, they're getting what do you call that? Copyrights for their particular versions. They're selling them. So they're liars, hypocrites, and they're changing the Word of God. So it doesn't even say anything about anybody corrupting the Word of God. So there's an idea floating out there that all the Bibles are from God, and that there are no. I've even heard people say it's impossible to corrupt the Word of God. All right. Well. <laughs> You can't be any kind of uh, a Bible studier and say that all versions are the same. It just, it's as if you've never even read the Bible at all. So, and then let's say uh, like the NIV, unlike so many, we do not peddle the word of God for profit. Yeah, they do. The NIV exa does exactly that. So they're lying and they're changing the word of God. And no nothing at all about corrupting the word of God. It's unbelievable. And NASB does the same thing, and so on and so forth. So you get the point here. These guys are corrupting the Word of God and hiding the fact that the Bible warns us against people corrupting the Word of God. All right, and so what else have we got here? Uh, and, uh, okay, so this is a critical point. Uh, in Deuteronomy 8, Matthew 4, Luke 4, uh, it says, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And of course, uh, let's see, where was that? Uh, like eight, let's take a look at John 8 here. We'll try to finish up on this. Okay, the very last verse. Then took they up stones to cast at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. So they wanted to kill him. But miraculously, he went right through the midst of them and passed by because it wasn't his time yet, right? So let's take a look at what these Vatican-proved Bible perversions have to say about this verse. Let's see. Click on that. And then let's go to ESV. And so they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. Oh, he must have went out the back door or something. I don't understand that. Seemed to have a conflict, right? And in an NASB, therefore they picked up some throwing, but Jesus hit himself and left the temple grounds. Well, would he go under a, a secret tunnel or something? NIV, and they picked up stones and stoned him. Jesus hit himself, slipping away from the temple grounds. Uh, some sort of secret uh, back door or something, I guess. I don't know. Uh, you, you get the point? Why are they covering the fact that he went through the midst of them and so passed by? So uh, why, why are they changing that? Because they want to take away the power of Jesus Christ, the, the, you know, the miracles of Jesus Christ, if you will, and change. And, boy, and not just that, they, they need to have their copyright. So they got to change some of the Bible so they can sell their books because it's all about money. All right. There's probably more, but uh, I appreciate that uh, question there, Fred.